Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Labyrinth of Legendary Loot. Uh, I actually came across this on uh, Retromation's channel, so uh, shout out to to their channel. Um, they they cover a lot of indie games, and this is uh, this was one of them. And it's a, a pretty awesome gem. It's a traditional roguelike, uh, like actually traditional roguelike, not uh, an uncompromising one. And it's a pretty simple one, um, which is nice. You know, it's it's a kinder traditional roguelike, which I'm all about. I definitely. Uh, appreciate um, an attempt at at the genre without it making it super punishing. Uh, I'm gonna start a new game here. I have been playing for a little bit. Um, I I have a couple of I'll say a, a couple of problems with the game, but I'm not gonna talk about um, that just yet. I do want to underline the fact um, just right away that this game is basically free. I mean, I, I encourage people to donate because I, I definitely think that this game is is worth some money. Although I think. Uh, Probably what's going to happen is the dev is like waiting until they hit some kind of milestone of uh, development and then they are going to, to charge some money and I encourage them to do so because I think it is worth it. So um, what what are we doing? Well, it's a, it really is, you know, back to basics, back to the drawing board for traditional roguelikes. You have a randomly generated dungeon and you have some loot that you can pick up. Uh, I just... I just did this. I just did the Titan Hammer, and I do like the Titan Hammer, but I kind of wouldn't mind trying something else. Sorry, you're you're not going to get to see the Titan Hammer, um, but uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and salvage it. So that's um, the first thing I should talk about is uh, when you find loot, you can salvage it for um, like uh, let's just call it currency. It's not really gold or anything. It's more like points, and um, the points can be used to upgrade your gear. Um, which you're gonna want to do a lot. The first thing, uh, the second thing I kind of want to mention is I love this. I kind of wish that more traditional roguelikes would do stuff like this, where um, you know projectiles in motion would uh, kind of hang in motion, like they they need time to travel. Um, this is something that I have seen before, but uh, I do I do like it every single time I see it. So our um, this is like a this the progression in this game is based on our equipment. I just want to get that out out there um so you're not going to be leveling up there's no there's no leveling up in this game whatsoever which means a couple of things you're not really um you don't really benefit from killing creatures at least not all creatures i really love my phone loves to stay silent um on every single video you know like hours and hours and then as soon as i start recording then it starts making noise all right, so um, we're going to be killing these creatures anyway. I mean, you, you got to survive at the very least. These Slimos, they drop some environmental acid on the ground and they can uh, damage uh, enemies. There is um, not so much infighting, but uh, anything that does damage will uh, damage uh, everything. Like, if that makes sense, like traps will, will hurt creatures. Um, and enemies or monsters will also hurt creatures if they are in the line of fire. They'll never turn their attention away from you, but they will accidentally hurt each other, which is nice. I, I appreciate that that is a thing. And I've I mentioned before uh, a few times that I, I like that whenever I see that. We've gotten a lot of weapons on this floor, which is actually, I mean, it's good, bad, because it means that we can salvage the ones we don't need and then upgrade our dimensional sword. Um, I Something I do really appreciate in this game is that um, you uh, you actually do benefit from upgrading early like uh, something I, I, I always find a little bit tiresome in Wow, we're finding a lot of weapons uh, in games in general. Let's uh, Teleport behind the furthest enemy in range and deal. Yeah, this is the nothing personal kid uh, attack Omari Shinderu, you know, you know how it is um it's it's always a little bit exhausting when you're like you get your first weapon or you get your first better weapon and you're like well i'll wait for the actual good weapon that i i want to start upgrading before i start wasting my points um this game is is different it has a kind of a different approach on that um and that is that you can take whatever weapon you find in this game to uh to the end game um and there's a couple of ways it handles the balance of like weapon upgrade or weapon progression uh, versus like the progression of difficulty versus I'll say the, the progression of a loot that you find. And it's a 
it's a kind of a nuanced thing that it, it'll be a little bit difficult to talk about but um i guess to, to put it in simpler terms um when you upgrade something it levels up that weapon but when you um progress through the dungeon you are offered new weapons at a higher level if that makes sense so if you want you can switch you know if you find a weapon that you with a bonus or a passive that sounds really good that synergizes with your um with your current layout uh then you can definitely switch and there's nothing wrong with that because you know exactly like uh, you know transparently you know exactly uh how good it is versus the weapon you're you you have like un in terms of like the scale like you know what level your weapon is versus the level of the weapon you're picking up uh okay let's put this guy to sleep <clears throat> and that way we can get right next to him and attack him um and so all it really means is that you can you can level up your gear and it will scale with the dungeon you know like not like this dungeon isn't scaling with you it's more like you're scaling with the dungeon and any weapon that you find can be an end game weapon which i really like like it's it's the, the the actives are all good they're all very solid and they all feel very good they all feel very satisfying um and they also scale very satisfyingly so we have this plus one volt gloves we do have a, a certain number of slots that we want to try and fill all of these um items are going to either add uh, uh offer an active or a passive Passives are a bit more rare and they're more valuable for sure, um, but the actives are also good. The only thing about actives is they tend to use mana, um, which isn't really a huge problem. We do, we do have mana, uh, and I do like that um, in this game there's no like intelligence, dexterity, strength so much. It's just raw stats, like it's raw damage, uh, it's raw mana, and and you don't really have to do any like uh, you know long algebra to figure out how much uh, of each stat you're going to get. You don't have to become a wizard to, ha to have mana, and you don't have to become a warrior to, to use warrior skills. It really is up to you how you play the game, which I really do like. Um, you know, for instance, we have this cloak here. It offers more mana and less health, um, and that mana just feeds into our pool, and we can use it for, like, all of our abilities, and we don't have to figure anything out. Meanwhile, we could also have, like, a barbarian axe, there's no gating, there's no gatekeeping in terms of like what kind of equipment you use. Um, so now this slime, well, we can use it there. Um, I, I find that I'm often, um, I, I'll say that this is, I, I think, an issue that I have with the game, but I'm not sure. I have, I've, I'm a little bit mixed on it, is I think that the enemies are, for the type of game that this is, um, maybe a bit too clever. And I'll talk about why, but um, let me see here. Do I want to use this? This offers more health. Chance to, when hit, to restore some health. Yeah, let's actually use that. But here you can see, I mean, um, so this is a plus one volt gloves. But we can see that this, uh, you know, based on the coloring, basically, it's an uncommon item. So it, it might offer uh, some uh, a slightly better stat. But also this might synergize a bit more with us. But either way, I'm going to use that. Nice thing is that you can always salvage your old item. And we definitely want to upgrade some of our items. I like to just kind of keep upgrading our sword as, or our main weapon as much as we want, uh, as, as we can. You'll notice here, I can't upgrade this weapon until we reach a milestone floor. Um, that milestone is, isn't is really, it, it's not generic. It's like for balancing sake, like it's, you know, you can't upgrade your sword past the, the scaling of the dungeon. Something I haven't really talked about, but um, that is important. Um, and then we're going to have to talk about this bear in, in a second. But there is no diagonal movement. Like, I can't use the numpad. I actually kind of wish I could use the numpad regardless of the fact that there's no diagonal movement. Just because I like to. Um, and I, I guess it, it is a minor criticism. Is I You have to use the directional keys and then W for weight. And then you can use the number keys to use your abilities. And I find that to be a little bit cumbersome. Um, I'm not even sure if you can edit. I guess you can edit it. So I could I could could get my hands dirty and actually edit it. I suppose if I wanted to, uh, if I was going to, I would probably go WASD and then space for weight. Um, but uh, even then, I might I might just use the, the numpad. I do. Um, I mean, I, I like I like the controls in this game. They they are simple. 
but um i do kind of wish there was a few quality of life features but this is like very nitpicky um it's just based on the fact that i've i've played a lot of traditional roguelikes and i've gotten used to a lot of like very common um you know mainstay quality of life features things like auto explore i wish that was a thing it's not a thing in this game um and uh you know things like well let me you know wait until abilities reach cooldown um i will say i think that enemies respawn in the darkness so it's got kind of that um <clears throat> adam uh flavor which is fine that's a choice and uh it, it, this is a matter of taste it's not generally my preference uh when when uh games do that but it's not really a problem in this game and i'm not i'll, I'll tell you why I'll, versus um ancient to uh, dungeons of of what, whatever madness i can't remember the, what adam stands for but i'll talk about it in a second this is our gravity helm i actually i've never i haven't seen this one before i had a great variety in um in items like items offer like really interesting and exciting um abilities and i i love to see it um so i didn't really talk about it but that bear oh this guy's got a he's got a, a he, he doesn't die for two turns after i've killed him um in fact he, he, so the bear and the guy i just killed the, the wolf with anything with an outline is an elite uh or champion um those are the only enemies that you actually benefit from killing because they will offer a, not just a health um like a, a health replenishment but also they offer some of that uh, the salvaging currency that i talked about before which we could, we're going to use by the way to upgrade our weapon again uh let's use our double strike good to use your skills um and then we'll we'll use i, I am using the mouse a little bit more than i would uh, like i i think it's another maybe that's another criticism i have is i kind of wish there was um a, a, you know the ability to just go like full mouse or or or, or sorry full keyboard um autocast override your attack instead dealing oh this is I, I i think i got this before yeah this is a good skill uh, or good item i like this item so um i accidentally pressed w because i feel like w my, my brain sa sa tells me w is forward but it's not um so the reason i don't mind that enemies respawn in this game versus adam is because uh, as far as i know i'm only trying to get to the bottom of the dungeon versus in adam um it's a it's a real problem because you're not just trying to get to the bottom you're also trying to get out of the dungeon and there's a lot more survival uh mechanics in adam uh versus this game where you're really just trying to worry about um getting some items getting to the next floor and worrying about the the moment to moment sort of tactical combat um like this guy let me see i kind of want to try this pull targets away in eight directions can i use this anywhere oh when de then deal damage to all targets around you does it mean like that'll pull everyone towards me and then do damage i don't know if this is a good time to use this i don't know let's just do some stuff that was kind of a nice combo um these ranged guys are a real pain in the butt because they're smart enough to walk away I was gonna say, um, I, I, I think that uh, the enemies are a bit s too smart for, for the, the good of the game in some ways because they end up uh, making it so you can't really like, I wouldn't say cheese it, but you can't use a lot of uh, tactics to kind of um, move them into hazards or stuff like that or bottleneck them. Like they're smart enough to kind of not line up. Um, so you can't line them up for your attacks and they're smart enough not to uh, you know to, to hem you like you can see these these slimes they're like very purposely not lining up and i think that actually hurts the gameplay in some form i mean does it make it more difficult i guess so um and you, you know your preference as to whether or not that is uh better or not or l more interesting or less interesting but personally speaking i think if you're gonna have um cool uh abilities in the game you should definitely give the player opportunities to use those abilities and i think that uh I, I sit on the line of I think that uh, more in, a, a better AI for your enemies are is the AI that makes them interestingly dumb 
um if that's you know like i know it's a harder thing to pull off i understand that um and i also know that this you know just uh, like i want to underline this game is free and uh i I'm, these are not really complaints but i uh, like i i would love to see this game come like come out 1.0 like i don't know for five ten like depending on how much content they add before release like 10 or 20 bucks like on the same uh level as that uh I'm trying to remember is it like something something dungeon of the keeper no okay that was really dumb oh god uh okay so that isn't a genuine complaint is i've that's not the first time that's happened to me is i lost the upgrade for from the anvil okay so i did manage to uh cheese this guy into the fire which was good i'm just gonna wait for the fire to pass by to pick that up that's not the first time the anvils are like super super uh valuable because they uh, upgrade one of your items with like uh, another passive ability this is once per turn when you kill an enemy with an attack attack another enemy that's actually really amazing after you attack take damage from an enemy gain resist four this is a fantastic little item oh, and i actually changed the uh the look of our character that's really cute i like that um i have uh found that I, um, I've accidentally mis misclicked on the anvil and then lost its, um, its benefit. Like I, and also like if you click on keep old, it doesn't give, let you, you know, choose a different item. Um, you're just kind of stuck with taking no reward, which I think really sucks. And c considering how valuable those anvils are, I don't think that that's a thing that the player should accidentally do is, is lose the benefit of the anvil. Um, these are like very like kind of um, I don't know you could fly it all under constructive criticism um, Because I actually like I do really like this game and I want to see it um, Succeed I want to see more of it. I would love to see uh, This this game get like a, a bunch of content um, I don't know like where I would go with this game to be honest I'm not sure like how you would uh, I develop this um, maybe not in the same, like, in the same way that, uh, like, Dungeon Man's of, of having, like, an overworld, uh, and an open world sandbox. It is kind of nice to just play, um, you know, a sandbox, uh, or not a sandbox, uh, traditional roguelike, but a traditional, traditional roguelike where you're just kind of, like, going down into a dungeon, and, um, you know, it's, it's all, uh, very wholesome stuff, you know, you just collect some collect some stuff try and get the the the, the amulet of endor or whatever and uh and then you're, you're home free so we got a plus two topaz armor of protection this is going to offer us more health less mana um lightning retribution whenever you get hit by an enemy deal some damage i like this more so let's take that and then salvage our old item and you notice it's it, it, it just tells you it's a plus two so that's a, a case of the gear kind of scales up with the dungeon. It doesn't mean that this is better than what I had, um, just because I, I found it later in the dungeon. It means that the, the dungeon is just offering like items that are on the same playing field as you. So, you know, actually choosing to take them over keeping your, your current gear is actually a choice and not just an obvious one. And um, I, I do really appreciate that about this game is it's, it's got it, it remembers to 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 you know give the the players um the player interesting choices when it comes to what kind of gear that you you take or you keep and definitely you can get some very interesting synergies uh like in the run i had going which was uh i, I it was probably going to be a one run to be honest i was, I was getting quite far into the into the dungeon uh i i was fighting that guy way longer than i should have um, this is our last equipment. Um, I was able to like have a chance to stun enemies and then I had a ring that was like whenever you stun an enemy, stun another enemy. And then you can like, I think you can get like another piece of equipment that's like whenever you stun an enemy, like reduce the cooldown of all of your gear. So you can get like, you can get really fun. Oh, here we go. Deal damage and stun all adjacent enemies for one turn. That's, that's pretty cool. We're going to Omarish and Drew this guy and then, uh, we can double backstab him. This ogre is uh, is kind of interesting. You can't really move him. Um, there are some abilities that will let you move. Uh, 
opponents, uh, but these ogres are very firm planted, but they also take two turns to, to do an attack. So we're going to wait. Uh, this, uh, this spider is going to be a pain in the butt. All right, let's, uh, do, do a, do a smack there. I should probably, let's, uh, stupid skeleton, stupid skeleton. Yeah, the ranged units are smart enough to back away, which I don't mind. Um, I think that's fine. Um, alacrity. At the end of your turn, attack a random enemy that you did not attack this turn. Hmm. Versus singularity. I kind of like that, and it offers more uh, health. This is also, this this red means it's a legendary uh, item, so probably worthwhile. It also has an enchantment. Whenever your chance, whenever you attack an enemy to take another turn, this is, yeah, that's just a fantastic item. Also, I haven't been upgrading my items at all, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and let's upgrade this dust devil as well. And that's increased the, uh, the, how long that alacrity buff is going to last. That doesn't happen very often. You can upgrade a gear quite a lot of times and it won't necessarily increase how long the, the, it's passive buff lasts. I guess that's an active buff. All right, doorbell. Thank you. Be right back. All right. Um, completely lost my train of thought there. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I guess I was talking about the the uh, amount of time a buff lasts, but I can't remember what I was saying. So. I love, don't you love it? You know, trying to, trying to, trying to get stuff done and uh, everything in the world feels like it's, it's got, it wants to, it wants to get in your way, you know? Um, we get this mind cloak. I've seen this before. Let's get rid of that. Um, I think I was going to upgrade some more stuff here. Override your attack instead. Let's, yeah, let's upgrade this. I'd like to reduce that autocast. I do kind of wish that um, it would give you like a preview of what's going to happen to the gear when you upgrade it. Um, I didn't mention this before, but actually you, you get full health between floors. So as soon as you reach the new floor, um, you're, you, you, you get a full health bar, which is kind of nice. Um, it certainly makes the game a little bit uh, easier. Let me see here. What do we want to do here at the end of yeah okay let's do this alacrity this seems like a good a good one and deal damage and stun all adjacent targets well okay not adjacent like close adjacent not diagonally adjacent okay uh, whenever you get hit by an enemy deal damage to that enemy and stun it for two turns that sounds good too we are using a ton of our mana right now but that's okay Yeah, that alacrity is actually incredible. Like, good lord. Um, we got some more uh, currency, so let's go ahead and spend it. Override your attack instead of dealing damage. Yeah, this uh, I like this Elonian ring, but like I say, I think that the um, I think that the enemy AI is maybe too clever, and sometimes it, it puts you in a position where your your skill is just never actually useful. So, like, at a certain point, I, I, I actually question the worth of um, that kind of skill. This guy is going to use... He all, always uh, attacks in a line, like, in front of him. What is this going to do? No, I don't think there's any way that we can top the, uh, the helmet that we already picked up. All right, yeah, that's we've got a pretty good combo going on here. Let's also use this thunder stomp Just to see how it works And it does work really well uh, I was wondering like it is the fire going to move on the same turn and if so then I would be able to oh shoot This guy managed to get the better of me. Hey, our, our uh <laughs> Isn't that isn't that great? I I, I was like, yay, our our, uh, our stupid auto casting is is finally gonna work, and then of course it didn't because it was on cooldown. Um, it is on it is an auto cast, so I can't actually decide when it gets used. 
I'm not sure. I think I like accidentally or uh, got very lucky with the stun there. Yeah, I, I do question this this um, item. It, it's honestly just more frustrating than than useful because like you just want it to actually work properly. You really want to see it even once attack more than one enemy in a line but it never does it never ever does because the enemies are smart and i i i, I find that kind of frustrating <laughs> but um you know i i think i've probably harped on that too much let's uh oh man is it actually gonna oh it actually worked good lord my goodness all that all that complaining for nothing when when really the problem was me the whole time um but either way i'm still i'm gonna use this alacrity and um well i guess it's the farthest enemy away you don't really get a choice oh wow it actually worked again so i guess it works um very well in in uh, conjunction with this uh teleporting skill or which one is it this one dimensional cleave there's some surprising synergies in this game. Um, I have been, you, you might notice, I have been kind of making a race for the bottom, and there's a reason for that. Your attacks create a projectile behind your t the target that deals damage. You know what? Let's try this. I think I'd like to try this over um, the items. Considering how much uh, complaining about it I've done, let's, let's try something else. And let's upgrade it a couple times as well. Also, um, like de the, depending on what level uh, a gear is, will kind of change how much it costs to upgrade it. So it is. I think that does actually encourage you to upgrade your uh, lesser gear and keep things keep things up. You know, like not not just like double down on one item. Oh, that was really good, by the way. I liked that a lot. A dimensional um, this di dimensional cleave is turning out to be a surprisingly good skill in a way uh this uh this new passive is not much different from the old passive this is the same sword uh, still offers dimensional cleave except this one is a uncommon one um teleport behind the first oh chance to deal double damage so this is an interesting choice so it's a lesser upgraded of the same sword but this one has a, a an extra enchantment so i think it actually would be worth taking this because we could salvage the old one and then upgrade the new one twice so now it's like we used i'm pretty sure that just means we straight up upgraded like there's a that was just an objective upgrade Wow, that, uh, that looks like a glitch there. I don't think that that's supposed to happen like that. Oh, that alacrity is so good. So these uh, gelatinous slimes will actually explode um, into adjacent to uh, doing like projectile damage. So yeah, one of the reasons I'm racing for the bottom is um, I think my last criticism for the game, and um, I'm, I'm gonna pull up, um, this, this one is mostly based on the description of the game in the store on the on the the, uh, the hio store page and that is it says it's a quick game you can beat it in a couple of hours i think that might be true but i think that um you definitely have to adopt a different play style in this game because like while um getting as much gear as as possible is definitely the winning move you want to you want to um progress with the dungeon you want to um quote unquote level up in terms of uh getting better gear uh, all of that is true, um, but I, I think that if you get into a hoarder mindset in this game, you're going to just be playing for for far too long, and it becomes quite exhausting very quickly. Um, like the, I think that the 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 positives of this game are in its its replayability, in the uh, variety of items. And I think that if you get into a hoarder like mind mindset where you're like, I have to fully explore every single floor and pick up every single piece of gear that I can find, 
um, then you'll find that to, the game is going to last a lot longer than it should and it actually kind of outstays its welcome versus if you just like pick up what you find and then go down to the next floor as soon as you find the staircase then um then you will you'll find that the game is actually a lot more fun uh because the game is actually going to like you know last probably as much as it should and not uh overstay its welcome i'm gonna upgrade this dust devil as well the alacrity is really doing a good job um yeah, we don't have we don't have enough mana when the the an ability is blue like that it means that we uh, it's off cooldown, but we don't have the mana uh, required to cast it. So this is an elite. This one, this guy is worth um, killing. I guess uh, Alacrity was wasted because it only attacks uh, units that you didn't attack versus... Uh, yeah, well, okay, never mind. I, I, think I, I think I already explained it. So... I've actually already in in this in this video half an hour I I've pretty much reached the same progression of my old um, the, the session I was playing and and I've got in some ways better gear um, and I think that the partial part of that is because I'm just like refusing to fully loot every single dungeon and like maybe you won't scale properly like maybe you don't get um good enough to, to to beat the end game but i don't know i think that this is more fun in, in a way and actually I, I think i'd rather um you know replay the game and and pick up new new gear versus playing one game for like two hours because i do think that it, it starts to become a little bit samey all right what is this this looks like some good gear bonds of pain Whenever you take damage, deal some deal the same amount of damage back to the target. Deal 15 to 34 damage to all adjacent enemies after casting. This seems good. Um, the nice thing about this lightning retribution, I should really keep this and also upgrade this protection because if I could up if I could get that that buff um, time up a bit, this offers so much more survivability. This is damage. Damage is good, obviously, but I think that if we could get that this up, the, the stun is so much better. Oh, come on. Uh, that's where, like, I I almost wish I could, like, see a readout of, like, um, you know, how what does what the progression of this gear look like? Like, what when do you get what? Um, we'll use Lightning Retribution, and that way we'll stun... But see, it only lasts the one turn. We do have some pretty good uh, stunning abilities. That uh, honestly didn't go very well. We got swift gauntlets. I do really like this double strike, but what is this? This costs almost twice the mana. Target an enemy, deal 17 to 30 damage to the target and restore health equal to half the damage. Uh... Mm, when hit chance when hit to restore health i i, I like what we, we we have especially if it's got an enchantment it's definitely worth it okay so we've got an elite i have actually never seen these uh, zombos before um let's do a dimensional cleave because we'll actually hit the zombie as well oh that means we don't have enough mana I am starting to uh, feel a little bit of... Oh, God, this stupid enemy. Oh, no, I died! Oh, that was so stupid because the only reason I died is because he... I, I didn't move away from him. Oh, that was that was just poor play. Oh, well, you know what? Like, let's leave it there because I don't want to make this video too long. And I, I talked about the bullet point features of this game that um, I wanted to talk about. I, I actually really like this game. I do. And in fact, I would like to... I'm going to go back and uh, I'm going to donate a little bit of money towards this because I, I do really appreciate um, what the dev is doing with this. I, uh, I really appreciate... Um, like anyone who's willing to take a crack at the traditional um roguelike format with some fresh eyes and a little bit of a fresher take and um you know i i appreciate this one's like very much back to the basics like let's make a traditional traditional roguelike 
with very basic dungeon layouts and just kind of focus on the moment to moment tactics and put in some interesting and varied uh, active abilities and some interesting gear. Like every single time I pick, see a piece of gear in this one or pick up a gear, I, I'm I'm kind of blown away because it's like, yeah, I, I, I've played so many games where like the gear is just feeble. It's like, you know, plus 2% to critical ch strike chance. It's like, my God, that that bores me to tears. And this one, it's like, you know, passive to whenever you take damage, there's a chance you could gain some health back or stun an enemy. And it's like, yeah, that's the, the chance is, is actually tangible uh, for something to happen. Something actually happens. And, and that is far, far more interesting. So I, I really appreciate this take. Um, but let's, uh, let's go back. I always forget the name. Labyrinth of Legendary Loot. You'll be able to find a link to the game in the description. Um, and uh, yeah, I definitely uh, encourage you to, to chip a couple bucks towards this. Um, because I think that it's it's already um, uh, you know a very worthwhile experience, and especially anyone who's willing to to do a traditional roguelike, I think they deserve um, some some uh, time and money, you know. But either way, um, thanks for for watching, and definitely let me know if you've played this game in the comments. And um, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.